In light of the current state of Surface Duo and Surface Duo 2, which, if you've not been paying attention to the channel, uh, is not very good, I thought it would be fun to take a look at how Windows 11, the project specifically to bring Windows 11 to the original Surface Duo, how that was going, where we are at this point. We have kind of a, a what's working, a what's not working list, courtesy of Gus on uh, GitHub. And we're also going to actually boot into it and look at it firsthand because of course I do have it running on my original Surface Duo. So the first thing we need to do is boot into this. And in case you don't know, I'll try to be, you know, fairly broad in my coverage here. In order to boot into the Windows 11 installation on Surface Duo, uh, you actually have to plug it into your computer and run a command through um, ADB in order for that to happen. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to plug ourselves into the computer and we're going to run that command. Now I've made this somewhat uh, simpler for myself by creating a series of shortcuts. And I think I may have actually seen where Gus has sort of uh, uploaded some scripts of his own, but I have done them in my own way. And this is what they look like. They're literally just shortcuts. And what they do, whenever you look at them and you see the target, you'll see what they do. They CD into my ADB folder and then they run a command and then they do a timeout to wait and then they run another command. And it works really, really well. His scripts may work better. I don't know. But if I double click on that there, you'll see that it just popped up. And uh, you're not going to be able to see this because it's just not a great way for me to show you both of these things, but the Duo one just went black. It'll wait 15 seconds, and then right about the time that it is ready to receive that next command, uh, it's going to send it. I could actually reduce that cooldown a little bit because it's ready closer to like 12 seconds, but this is, you know, safe enough. So now it's injecting the boot.img, which is basically the, uh, the UEFI that uh, boots us into Windows 11. And then at this point, or pretty close to now, um, my Surface Duo will pop up in a little bootloader screen here that will ask me to press the power button to boot into Windows. There it is. We're going to press that there, and we should be booting. At this point, we can actually unplug it from our computer, and you'll see uh, from here what that booting process actually does look like. I might skip a little bit of this part. Some graphical glitches there on the right screen, which does tend to happen uh, during this booting process, but it should go away. And we should be okay now. So we're going to swipe up and we're going to put in our pin. And I'm going to turn down the brightness on this here in a second so that you can actually see what on earth is going on because this is a problem. Whenever you first boot in, it is like brighter than the surface of the sun. And it doesn't uh, it doesn't know what to do about that. So you have to actually go in and kind of reduce that yourself. I think that will be a pretty good look there. So this is Windows 11 on my Surface Duo. Now I've had to just recently do a clean install for this last update, so there's not a whole lot of anything installed on here. But you can see that a lot of this stuff is working, you know, kind of surprisingly well, right? Like it's fairly performant. Let's open up Edge, and you can see how fast that opened up. Wi-Fi is working, but for some reason I'm not connected. Let's go ahead and connect to my Wi-Fi automatically, and uh, we should be able to load up YouTube here in just a moment. As I'm connected, but yet have no internet. That should not be true. Okay, there we go. We're good. Okay, some okay. Something strange just happened where I've lost my icons. I think something crashed there. Whatever. We're okay. We're gonna refresh here and load up YouTube, and you'll see it does load up. You know, relatively quickly. Maybe not the quick. You know, as quick as as you'd like it to be. But I, I think that the biggest problem here is that there's no audio. The speakers don't actually work. If click on this. Let's go to subscriptions. We'll load up one of my videos. It's great in that it works and it plays and everything's cool there. But again, there's no audio. So you're going to have to um, Bluetooth earbuds or something like that for that to work. I have also turned off uh, the Windows snapping uh, stuff so that I can drag stuff across the two screens before as you got here, it would want to do a snap layout and it would get very confusing. So you kind of want to get rid of that and then just use the min max buttons up there at the top. Let's open up File Explorer and we can drag this over there. Looks like I opened it up twice on accident. You know, one thing that would be really cool to see would be the ability to, for you know, for it to remember, like hey, if I'm, if I'm hitting the file browser over here, open it on this screen. If it's over here, open it on this screen because right now it does not know. Like if I close that, it's just gonna open it back up uh, where it just was, it doesn't remember. Um, where that should be. So like if I 
close it again and then I open it up over here, it's, yeah, it's going to be over there. So that would be something really, really cool to see. Auto rotate is also pretty weird. Like sometimes it doesn't do anything for me and then sometimes it does, but only one screen rotates. You can see right now that nothing is happening and it's possible that I just don't have that setting turned on, but we can, we can look at that. Let's go into our, uh, our settings here. See it popped up on the other screen, which I wish it wouldn't do, but whatever, we're over here, so we'll just roll with that. Let's go into display. And you can kind of see here that how Windows sees these two monitors. It's actually kind of cool to look at here. You can actually set which one you want to be the primary display. And if we scroll down here, rotation lock is off. So yeah, it should have been rotating. Yeah, it should have been rotating there, but it wasn't. So I'm not really sure what's going on with auto rotation. So now that we have it kind of booted up and I can use it as a, as, a, as a point of reference here, we'll look at this screen here. We'll scroll down and we'll look at what's working and what is not working. So let's go to the stuff that's working first. Uh, left and right screen multi-touch is working on both. The digitizer is working on both, but calibration is needed. Otherwise works fine, it says. So your Surface Pen will be working just fine. Bluetooth is working, so that kind of helps with the audio thing because you can you know pair a speaker or some earbuds or something to it and kind of get around that at that point. UFS basically is uh, to do with the storage, and so that's working fine. The side buttons are working okay. So strangely enough, even though the audio is not working, your side buttons are working. You can actually see the volume changing down there. Of course, nothing's actually happening. And then the power button uh, is also functioning Although that does always reset the brightness, which is, again, as bright as the surface of the sun. There's also some weirdness with the brightness uh, toggle itself. The slider itself is a little inaccurate. The uh, lid hall sensor is working. So if you close it and open it, it does know that that's happening. Thermal sensors, vibration is working. Both batteries are functioning. So as you know on Duo, maybe you don't know, there are two separate batteries, right? One on each side. They are both functional. Uh, a little bit more on that later. Both uh, displays are working. GPS is working. Miracast, Wi-Fi, cellular data, cellular text, cellular eSIM. Cellular calls is a bit of a work in progress. I must admit, I don't know much about how this worked on the Lumia project. Uh, but as you can kind of read the text here, there are some things you can do in terms of provisioning to potentially make this work. But it's not something that's just straight away working. The uh, camera flash is working, although the camera itself is not. The flash is working. The GPU is functional. In fact, I have ran some small games on here. I've installed Steam and ran some games. I'll link to that video below. Performance is honestly better than you might expect. And as we get better GPU drivers down the line, as he's able to kind of sure these things up, potentially the ability to run games at lower resolution. Gaming might actually be like kind of a crazy decent thing on here. Uh, modern standby is apparently functional although i will say that when my device is closed in standby for very long when i open it back up it is off uh, it does crash with some pretty strong regularity system on a chip cores the prime core frequency isn't scaled up so probably still missing some performance although it does actually still run fairly well usb-c is apparently still being worked on and i can attest to this USB-C dongles, uh, powerless dongles in particular. We have some problems basically with these things. Sometimes I plug in a dongle and it works. Other times it doesn't. And that's a bit of a, a bit of a pain because with something like this running full windows, you kind of want to be able to plug it into a USB-C hub of some kind. And the fact that that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't for me is a little bit of a, of a troubling thing. Calibration for the sensors isn't being automatically copied over. Pedometers, motion sensors are not currently functional. The charger is a problem. You can't actually charge this device in Windows. You have to shut it down, boot into Android, and then begin charging. Or I reckon if you just turn it off, I think you can charge it when it's turned off at that point. Although plugging it in may boot it in Android anyway. So charging in Windows is not possible. Audio, as I said, is uh, not working. Although I do want to say... The fact that this says incubating, I think charging is really close. I think we're really close to having that, which is going to be a really big one. HDMI out is incubating as well. Um, so it's not there currently, but it may be coming soon. The camera sensor is not functional. So using this as a webcam or something is not a thing you can quite do yet. Fingerprint scanner is also not functional. I do not know what Hyper-V is and I have not looked into it. So I won't speculate on that one. This cellular option uh, he says untested due to lack of app and software currently. So that is kind of where we're at. Okay, there's been a lot of really good progress and there's 
some potential here for sure. But there are also still a lot of things that are in the way of daily driving this thing. I've seen a lot of people say, oh, Android's going so poorly right now. I'll just install Windows and daily drive that. No, I, I really don't think that you will. And there's so much here that I could cover and so much I could talk about that I don't I don't really know how I could even go about doing it. It would be a really, really like crazy video to make. But if we look at this thing, okay, so there are some things that are a little bit troubling. Like if I want to click up here in this address bar, you would think that'd be easy, but I've just clicked on Feedly. I've clicked on, I've somehow opened up a new tab now. Like getting into that at like, on the edges of the display, it, I, like it's really, really hard to get the touch response to do what you want it to do. So that still needs a lot of calibration. And that is something that would drive me absolutely insane. Something that, you know, isn't actually as bad as you might think is the typing experience. The keyboard's not half bad. And it will generally pop up whenever you need it, although you can also pin it down there so that you can just open it whenever you actually need it to open. I don't think when you go into phone mode, I think both screens, yeah, both screens should stay on. So phone mode is is not a thing at all. I mean, it really comes down to reliability, right? Like we're probably, the problem we're having with Duo is that it's not reliable right now. Text messages, phone calls, do you think this is going to be more reliable? And then with the touch response stuff, the lack of apps, the crashing when you are in standby. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be still shored up. Now, all that being said, what has been done already is incredibly impressive. Like, there is promise here. In my mind, though, the things I've just mentioned, you know, they, they need to be fixed. This stuff needs to be needs to be functional. But then beyond that, you know, for this to truly be like a good experience, we need some sort of a graphical user interface or something that's going to take advantage of the dual screens. Something that's going to make it, like I said, where you 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 click on an app on one screen and opens on this screen and, you know, where it actually utilizes this correctly instead of doing what it does on normal Windows where it just opens the app wherever. Because unlike on a regular computer with a mouse and keyboard where it's really easy to grab a window with your mouse and throw it over there, on this with your finger... It's really like cumbersome and annoying. I'm actually in the process of installing Steam on here again, but it's like really annoying. Like, let's say this opens up on the wrong screen and I want to move it. Well, I got to do this and I can't just carry through most of the time. It usually stops, right? So you have to like get it halfway through and then grab it again. Like this stuff just doesn't, doesn't work that well. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Even if Windows 11 just as itself was working like perfectly, Windows 11 does not work perfectly on this device. It's going to need additional work to work well on Surface Duo. That's beyond getting all the hardware working correctly. So, it, it, again, I don't want to sound like I'm like dumping on what Gus has done here because it's unbelievably impressive. Like, this is so much further along than I ever thought it would be. The graphical glitches are effectively gone once you're actually using the device. It's much more performant than I thought. It's more performant than the Lumia devices were, and people use them quite a bit. So if you're an old Lumia Windows user, this is already faster than that by a, a pretty good margin in terms of just raw performance. That Snapdragon 855 is a lot more powerful than this stuff that was in those old Lumia phones. But this is an odd form factor a lot more hardware to get fixed, and the software is going to have to do something to work well with this hardware as far as I'm concerned to make it a really good experience, and that may never really happen. All that being said, you know, look, if the crashing's gone, you can charge it, the speakers are working, you know, there's going to be people that are going to want to daily drive that, and at that point, if, that, if that's true and it becomes reliable in that sense, and I can pop a SIM in and text and call from it, you know, maybe it's not for me, but maybe at that point it would be for you. So I guess, you know, if the question is how close are we to daily driving that, I think that's the answer. We're as close as getting the crashing, the charging, and the speakers work. And if all those things are functional and the phone calls are, are easy to set up at least or somewhat easy to set up, I, I think it would be daily drivable for some people. That day is not today, but maybe it's coming sooner than later. This will be in a playlist of a lot of other videos on this subject, Windows 11 on Duo specifically. So if you want to see that stuff, uh, at least let this playlist roll, I guess, and you'll see more of it. If you're new here and you want to see stuff like this, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss it. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.